Hello and welcome to another Crafter's Toolbox. As you know, Halloween is just around the corner, so I thought instead of tricks, I would give you some treats. And here I have for you a whole bunch of Distress Oxide blending combos that will be perfect for your Halloween projects. I have another treat for you, and that's all of these fantastic cut files. It's something new that I'm offering on my website and are available for you to purchase. As a part of this introduction, I'm doing a giveaway, so be sure to leave a comment to be eligible to win this set of cut files. So you can see that I've done just some distress backgrounds on all of these projects, but let's take a quick look at the cut files just so you can see what they look like. Of course, these are SVGs, so you can expand them using your uh, preferred cutting system and you can make them into something large enough for a scrapbook spread. You can keep these the same size for an A2 card. Um, of course, once you get it into your system, you would be able to manipulate them a little bit and customize them just to whatever you need to do. So I'm really excited to be offering these and hope to be offering more SVG files soon. But for today, let's get to some blending and I'll show you how these all work together. All right, so for this video, I thought we would get started with the witch, and that's because she really is just the quintessential Halloween icon, but also because this blend is really quite easy to do, and if you're not familiar with Distress Oxide blends, this is a really great place to start. So I just have a piece of 80 pounds solar white, and this takes blends really well, and underneath here, I just have um, a piece of Teflon sheeting, and this is just something you can get for baking and I like to cut them down just to the right size and it really helps to keep my mess contained and uh, I just really like the way that they work with all sorts of different techniques that I can use my distress oxides and my distress inks for. So right now I am in fossilized amber and you can see that I'm really loading up the brush. So this particular blend is going to be kind of like a moon. So the moon is a big yellow orb here. And I'm not too concerned about being really neat with my edges yet. We will get to that in a moment. So that's the fossilized amber. And I've got a lot on there, but that's good. So spice marmalade is our next color. And this is gonna start blending into the fossilized amber. So I just start getting some of that ink right in place here. And you can see that it's already starting to blend into the amber. And I can put in as much as I think I need. I'd really like to get out to this edge here. There we go. And then once I feel like that's pretty good, I'm gonna come back with the amber. And actually I'm gonna use this piece of scrap so that way I'm not getting my hands up in the ink. I'm gonna start blending out this line here. And you can see it blends together pretty easily. And that's because Distress Oxides are a pigment ink blend and they're very creamy. So they really do like to blend together and you can blend any color combination. It doesn't have to be a typical combination. It really can be any two, three, four, five colors together. So the last one I'm gonna do is Seedless Preserves, and this is a great purple color. It's one of my favorite fall colors, actually. And this one is a really strong color, so I'm gonna start off to the side here and then work my way in because I don't really have very far to go and I don't wanna end up with harsh edges. So I'm just gonna get this purple on the edge here and then start working that semicircle again. And you can see how quickly this comes together. And that's really one of the reasons why I love using these cut file overlays is because they can make a card come together really quickly. And then you can focus on a technique for the background instead of spending a lot of time in the foreground. So this is looking pretty good. And just like before, I'm gonna go into the previous color and start blending the edge where they meet in these small circular motions. And you can see how that just comes together. So then just a final touch with the Seedless Preserves. 
and we have a gorgeous uh, blend going on here. So the next step is going to be adding in some splatter. Now I could leave it just like this. It's going to dry just a hair lighter. And I like to leave out my overlay just so I can see where it's going to end up and if I need to make any adjustments with colors, like if I wanted to bring any more yellow out into this area here, now would be the time to do it. But this looks pretty good. And so my next step is gonna be adding that spatter in. And I'm gonna be using three things. I'm gonna be using water, an antique gold spray from Alta New, and a distress spray stain in black soot from the Tim Holtz Ranger line. So I'm gonna start with the water. And this is where the beauty of oxides come in. So I'm just gonna spritz this, and you're gonna to start to see that oxidation happen, where it starts to pull up the ink. And if I let it dry, you'll see all these areas start to turn white, or I can just pick it up with a paper towel. And I'm ready to go on to my next step. So now I have this kind of spackled look, which is really gonna add some depth to the project. And especially because it ends up being flat, you want to add depth to the background. So now I'm just taking this gold spray. And you do need to shake this up because it does separate. And I just like to use the wand to get some spackle on here, spatter, whatever you want to call it, spray, all sorts of S words for that. And those are gonna turn into beautiful gold spots. And then while I'm waiting for those to dry, I'll just go ahead and do the same thing with the black and really get that depth in place. So you can see having this Teflon sheet underneath is really helpful because it helps contain the mess. I'll just be able to lift it up and go rinse it off and it'll be ready for the next use. All right, so I just need to wait for this to dry and then I'll be able to go ahead and put my card together. And it's super simple to do that. It's just a card base with that one layer with our background and then the overlay. There's really nothing more to it. So um, that's why these overlays really work well to make a fun holiday card without a lot of effort. So I hope you enjoyed today's Crafter's Toolbox and that you're really excited to get your hands on some of these SVG files so that way you can make some awesome Halloween designs of your own. Don't forget to leave a comment for the giveaway and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch up with my next Crafter's Toolbox later this week with another Halloween blend. Thanks for joining me today and until next time, happy crafting.